titled My Brother Doug. My brother Doug and I grew up on a farm in North Dakota. This was during the era of the Great Depression and Dust Bowl years of the 1930s. We were poor. There were no crops and no harvest. Times were so hard that even the church mice were poor. But we were so poor that the church mice took up a collection for us. <laughs> Because we were so poor, we were isolated on the farm. Gasoline was 17 cents a gallon, and we didn't go to town unless it was really necessary. My brother Doug got to go to town one day. He went along when our dad had business in town. To Doug, this was big city, bright lights, wishing North Dakota. Population, 1,400. <laughs> there was, there was a hardware store. There was a general store. There was a blacksmith. There was even a high school. Wow. It was called a high school, we thought, because it was two stories high. <laughs> <laughs> Doug heard that there was a track meet in town. This was something he had to see. He had heard of cuts of meat, like steak. He was familiar with these steak and chops. But he had never heard of a cut of meat called track. <laughs> so he, how could he find out? The butcher would know. So he went to the butcher shop and explained this all to the butcher. The butcher listened to him. He chuckled a little, he laughed a little, and he told Doug, it's not this kind of meat. Go down to the edge of town and you will see the track meat. So Doug went and there it was in front of him. There was a great big oval horse track with kids with numbers on their backs running around on it like crazy. And on the other side, there were kids throwing spears, and there were no deer or nothing around. <laughs> and on the ground, there was this long, skinny stick. It, was, it, it must have been as high as the, as long as the goalposts, or the, the, not goalposts, the posts were. And these, the posts had, it looked like a fishing pole strung across it. So he picked up the stick and he examined the contraption and got the feel of it. Then he noticed there was a man with a zebra shirt coming toward him. And this was unusual, Doug thought, and he wondered if the zebra shirt man had escaped from prison. <laughs> The, the man with the zebra shirt came up to him and asked him, Are you a pole vaulter? <laughs> Doug was taken aback. He was a little offended. No, he answered. I'm not Polish, I'm German, and my name isn't Walter. understand why he was banished to the bleachers. <laughs> a couple years later, he got to go to high school. This was high adventure. There was basketball, football, but best of all was the high school band. And it was a good <coughs> band. The leader of the band was called the band director. He loved John Philip Sousa. He studied everything Sousa had composed, and he had the band play, play these tunes at military marches, at football games, at parades, at concerts. He admired Sousa so much that one of his goals was to visit Sousa's grave. 
So he saved his money. He traveled to the, the Congressional Cemetery where Sousa was buried. He was a Marine, you know. He found the grave, and he was just in awe. Here he was. All of a sudden, something strange happened. Music started coming up from the grave. Everything Sousa had composed. But even stranger, the music was coming up backward. But that really wasn't that strange because now Sousa was decomposing. <laughs> All that happened over 70 years ago. And my brother Doug says he's getting old. He's so old that when he was in grade school, he remembers this. He, when he was in grade school, he was studying geography. That was before social studies were invented. And he remembers in geography class that he learned about the Mississippi. The Mississippi, at that time, it was so long ago that the Mississippi was still a miss. <laughs> He's so old, he says, that he remembers when the Dead Sea was only sick. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was really good, Grandma. <laughs>